So we're back looking at our um, 2 hertz signal that was generated by uh, changing the flow of time rather than changing the uh, frequency component in the wave equation. So we're able to demonstrate here that I can get a 2 hertz wave uh, by increasing the um, flow of time. So we have 1 over the sample rate times 2 that gave us a 2 hertz wave. So let's do you go back and do the same thing that we did uh, in our frequency to uh, change the flow of time. We need to get this to sweep. Um, which means I'm going to have to add a new table in here. Let's see. Because I need something to compare to um, to generate my sweep here. So I'm just going to basically take, uh, let's just take, all right, I'm going to start with zero. And I'm going to copy this, paste them over there, get rid of the times two component. So this is just going to represent a regular flow of time, unrelated to anything. I'm going to use this to uh, to uh, have a time base to know when to change the frequency, basically. So let's just take this guy here, a four four. 101, enter, control D. And let's look at our time. So this is this is just a linear piece for me to play with. We're now going to do this differently. So we're going to still start at zero. But now uh, this frequency, so we have to, uh, this is time times this. We're going to make this piece sweep based on uh, the value before that. So that's going to multiply by, let's use that same equation we did before basically. So 1 plus um, 2 times floor um, go A1 times 10. So basically at 10 points, we're going to increase the frequency. Um, and what we should see is actually the angles change on the, the sine wave instead of seeing it jump around. And what have I done? A1 times 10. What didn't it like? So this times 1 plus... Two times four. Oh, I didn't set the. Too few arguments. Four a. Da, da, da. I've got to put it in the wrong spot. It's not my day for cell equations here, apparently. All right. Now, now it's happy with that one. So. B1 plus 4A1, 4A1, oh silly me, I want the same term, uh, A2, okay, so let's just take that equation, now it's going to basically change the frequency about 10 times within our sample range here, and let's see if that behaves, yeah, the way I expect it to. So call B44101, enter, control D. And that is the result we want. We're not jumping around to uh, random points in the wave. We just have uh, the frequency change, uh, change to the slope. We have uh, exactly what we wanted to see. So uh, it appears that the change of changing the flow of time uh, is a much better way to change the frequency of a wave when you're doing uh, sound synthesis. 
So if we look back, which we can't, because uh, I deleted it already, but if we look back at the other formula we had uh, where we were calculating frequency inside the wave equation, we got that ran, uh, random jumbled mess every time a frequency changed. That's just basically because it was jumping to a different spot in the sine wave to create the new uh, the new wave. By changing the rate at which time flows, we can still generate the same frequency, but we don't have any errors when we change uh, the frequency in the middle of a wave. So I think that uh, covers the other point I really wanted to, to show with um, analyzing uh, signals in, in uh, Excel. Uh, here we're able to prove that an algorithm was flawed uh, and demonstrate uh, graphically really easily. Didn't have to write any code, do any tests, and uh, just using the simple uh, graph features, we're able to uh, find an algorithm that, that works much better. And I think that pretty much covers what I want to show here.